Hello, welcome back. We're now going to do another program and it is this one, task 9, part 2. Write a program that will calculate the average or mean, which is another word for average, of a set of numbers. We don't know how many numbers, but the user is to be asked how many numbers are to be averaged. So the user will enter how many numbers they want to enter and your program will calculate and display the average of those numbers. So we need the input would be, first of all, how many numbers are going to be entered. We're asking the user to do that. Type in the numbers, they want how many numbers they're going to enter, and then they have to type in each number. So we'll get a variable called quantity, which well, we can call your variable anything you want. I'm calling it QTY. And I have a question here in the input statement. How many numbers do you wish to enter? Okay. Now that whole thing is going to return a string. But I want it to be an integer. So the input statement will return a string after the user types something and presses enter. It'll be a number, hopefully, because if it's not, this int won't work. We'll have a runtime error. But int is going to convert the string that the user types in, which will be represented by a number, into an integer. Why do we want that integer? Because we're going to use it to count in a for loop later on. So, well, just over here, actually. We want to repeat code, so we're going to use a for loop. Why do I want to repeat code? Well, we don't know how many times how many numbers are going to be entered and we have to enter the number the user has to type in the number each time so we need a loop to repeat this line here and this line here in this line we're going to ask the user to enter a number and that will be saved in a variable called number I'm making up that variable you can call it anything you want in the input statement over here we have a big long string which is made up of three separate strings this is the first string with a space to look nice you know we have words separated by spaces so I'll put a space at the end there because over here we want to know which number we're we entering is it number one is it number two is it number three is it number four so if there were four numbers this is going to go from one to four how do I know? Because x is my for loop counter over there. You have to have like a for loop counter that's the because what happens with the for loop, you have to have a counter there that's going to change in a range, in this case from naught to quantity. But the format of this is that it will go from naught to quantity minus one. So if quantity is 4, it will go from x is going to go from 0, 1, 2, and 3. So if QTY is 4, x is going to go in the range, is going to increment each time from 0, then 1, then 2, then 3, and that'll be four times, which is what we want. Four times we want the user to enter a number. That is obviously only if QTY is 4 after this line has been entered. We'll explain this line just now, but right now we're worrying about this long line here. So this long line is taking a variable, making it equal to whatever the user types in here in an input box. And this is our question structured to make it look pretty so that the user knows that they're entering number one, then number two, then number three, and number four that colon at the end there is just to make it pretty as well so that the user has a space before they type in this string over here can you see it's called str <laughs> because x is a number why are we adding one to it because x is actually going to start at naught so therefore we're going to add one to it so we can display number one and take note how the substrings are all separated by commas that's a string, this is a string, and this is a little string. And the comma separates them all. Now, why do I have int here? Well, 
as I explained before, in the input statement returns a string. So whatever number the user types in after the statement must be converted to an integer because in the next line we are adding that number that's typed in to a variable called sum. Now why do we have to add the number to sum? Because to calculate the average we need to have the total, the sum of all the numbers, divided by how many numbers there are. We know how many numbers there are. There they are. That QTY is how many numbers are, have to be added up. Now sum must be equal to the previous sum plus number, but more often than not, sum will not be zero to start off with. So we have to set it equal to zero before the for loop starts. And in the for loop, there's only these two lines. Take note, they're indented. So before the loop starts, we get sum equal to naught. And then here we say sum equals the previous sum, which will be naught when this for loop runs first. And then plus add the number that the user typed in. And you know why we used int there now, because we have to do addition using our number. Right, so that for loop is going to go from 1, if there were four numbers, it'll go 1, 2, and 3, naught, 1, 2, 3, naught, 1, 2, 3, quantity minus 1. And after all of that has happened, after that loop has done its job, then we go back to our margin over here. We're out of the loop now. This line is out of the loop. We said set the average equal to the sum, which was calculated inside the loop, divided by quantity, which was the number of numbers over there. Then all we do is display the average. Now this is weird because uh, Python is quite happy with us putting the average over there without converting it to a string. Anyway, we'll see you in the next one.